Hello everybody, uh, this is a pretty detailed discussion on Indonesia and Southeast Asia and Oceania. Uh, I just finished a discussion topic on the Philippines and basically I wanted to add Indonesia into that which is basically this whole other area just south of the Philippines. This is also extremely important. Um, in fact, it's maybe two, three times the size, maybe even four times the size in terms of land mass, maybe even five times the size, now that I think about it. Um, so uh, basically there's a lot of area to cover here. Um, Philippines was a kind of a 30 minute discussion. I'm gonna try to keep this as quick as possible. Um, however, I'm going to diagram a lot of this on camera so you can kind of see essentially how I've been doing some of these diagrams. Um, so if you're interested in trying to study any of these pictures, I'll kind of go through them. This is an Earth at Night image right here. Um, we're going to go through a do look at a soil image. We're going to look at a flight map image. Look at a downtown Jakarta image. My mom was actually born in Jakarta, Indonesia, believe it or not. Um, and then we're going to look at the overall electrical footprint for all of Southeast Asia and essentially mostly uh, the Philippines and Indonesia again. Kind of get, dive into some details on the population <coughs> for Jakarta um, and then look at the population overall for the, all the islands. Kind of look at some of the deforestation problems going on. Soil and then we're going to look at the topology and then also look at some of the geology here. You'll see another geology image here. And then just basically what's going on with all the shipping industry. So the shipping industry is super important um, because uh, most of the goods that are shipped are actually by ocean. Um, we're gonna try and look at some of the economics of the Philippines and so on. And I'm even gonna try to DJ tonight and play some free music. So if you haven't heard any Indonesian music before, we're going to play a little bit of Indonesian music as well. So, um, and then go into some more population details. If you haven't been to Bali, uh, Bali is one of the most popular tourist destinations on the planet. Um, and it's just this tiny little island, believe it or not. Five million people visit there per year. I think even me, it's getting upwards beyond that. So I'm not even sure on the exact number. Uh, it's so huge the amount of people that are visiting uh, Indonesia. And you can see the air traffic is kind of converging here in Jakarta, but actually Bali over here has a huge amount of flights as well. And you can see the light footprint is huge. So we're gonna go ahead and diagram some of this. Um, I'm gonna try to play some music um, from the audio library here and I'll place it over here so you can see uh, some of the audio music as we go through some of that music and <clears throat> excuse me here this is kind of my first time using so many windows and in fact I'm gonna keep it over here just to make it a little simpler uh, so this first piece is just an ambient piece uh, and it's called Bali Bali uh, I just <laughs> a lot of these pieces I haven't really even heard uh, I downloaded them I'll just show you the image what that looks like. So if you wanna do this, you can go to the YouTube audio library and you can go to the audio library down here. And this is all their free music with sound effects as well as other things. And then you can just search for different types of music that have keywords. Um, and that's what we're gonna to try to do tonight. So <clears throat> I'll play some music while I'm working on some of this. If you want, send me a chat. Um, I'm actually going to play Spring Thaw uh, instead because it had a kind of a different sound. It is kind of late at night right now uh, to be working on some of this. So uh, if you want, just send me a message. I will try to send it back and talk with people as working on this goes. So here we go, some Indonesian music. Thank you. 
pretty interesting music. Uh, you can hear kind of the uh, the pan instruments, so those are kind of cool. You hear those actually also in the Caribbean, uh, like in Jamaican. It sounds like those Jamaican uh, sounds a little bit, actually, was my first reaction to this. Um, so this is the electrical diagram, um, and you can see how huge uh, Java is. So if you're not familiar with Indonesia, basically there's a bunch of different islands, and Java is kind of the main island. And fortunately, uh, on the population side, uh, let me just go to the population diagram. So you can see here, uh, basically the extreme amount of pressure on the population. So what's going on here is that there's basically here, there's an island right next to it called Bali. Uh, and that is a super famous island. And then there's another one called Lombok right next to that. And then there's another island which my grandfather went to called Sulawesi. Um, and this is a very mysterious island. And I believe he actually got a brain disease from this island, Sulawesi, and then Sumatra is actually even kind of another part. Um, I consider it its own kind of area, but anyway, so I'll circle it here, and there's actually some weird islands off the coast here um, that you can see, and they actually even extend out to here, and this is actually part of India, believe it or not. So. Uh, so there's some very strange things going on because there's so many weird islands out here. Uh, you even got a place called Timor, um, and I should probably circle that in a greenish color here. And I'm not going to put these other small islands on there just because they're so uninhabited. Um, but there is, you can see a little bit of population in there. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see. Um, but basically, um, that is one of the diagrams for the population. But it's easy to see where the electricity is, so you can kind of start to see what's been going on. Now, the capital currently is in Jakarta, but they're gonna be moving that, I think, over to this island here. So it's likely that this whole entire island will become a massive industrial island. So it's actually very in, not inhabited right now at all, but they're basically just, they've almost completely populated this island, so they're gonna move the capital for to here, um, you may look it up and find out where they're gonna do that, but it's kind of scary because they'll probably deforest the entire island, which is scary. Um, they're already kind of done that to Sumatra. Um, so it means that there's actually a real fight for keeping these islands, and particularly uh, what they call the far eastern half of, it's like the western half of Papua New Guinea, but the eastern side, this is west and this is east, there's another island kind of half of Papua New Guinea here um, that is very, it doesn't even show up on the map. It's kind of darkish color here. That's because there's no electricity out there. Um, but anyway, so if you're interested in studying Indonesia, this is how it all gets started. Um, and I'm gonna save a couple of these images and then post them later after we're done uh, reviewing anything. So let me get back to some, I'm gonna play a slightly different song and then we'll maybe go back to that one later. This is called Bali Bali. It has a little bit different sound, a little more upbeat, so I just wanted to play that instead. <laughs>
Wow, totally awesome music. Uh, so I hope you really appreciate the music as well as the diagrams here. And I just wanted to say a couple things as I was working on this. So it really goes so far out to Papua New Guinea. And it's really important to think about the wildlife. I'm not actually diagramming this based on human uh, only activity. I'm actually trying to specifically look at how this might affect the ocean. And the reason I'm diagramming these kind of like this is because these are deltas. So this is a river system that heads deep into the jungle of Cambodia and Laos and basically drains right out from Vietnam. Um, and actually it's mostly, believe it or not, uh, from Cambodia and actually partially uh, because Vietnam kind of ends here in Ho Chi Minh City. And so it's the Delta is actually mostly responsible on the Cambodian side, believe it or not, uh, when you look at the details there. Um, but uh, there's so many areas that enter into the water system here. So you can kind of see these little river systems. These are big swamps. So these blue things areas are essentially swampy rivers. You only see this uh, basically in the Amazon and you see this in some parts of jungle areas and they turn to like bright green rivers. Um, and they're really amazing. Some of them have very clean water in them. And actually what you find is that the taller the mountains, the cleaner the water typically. So basically what happens is there's all these volcanoes. You see these red spots along the, here, this is actually volcanic dirt. So the red spots are pretty, most definitely volcanoes on here. Um, and then they basically drain down the water off the side of the mountain. So the water's cleanest on the side of the mountain and then it gets dirtier as it goes down the hill and eventually starts to hit the people and the populated areas. The street problem is very significant and you can see here, uh, these are the major streets, but it's basically heavily densely populated in Jakarta. Um, but that, um, is one diagram to do. Um, and there's it's just really important to look at Sulawesi. I wanted to not diagram it super detailed in here because it's really important to see, keep some of these details so that I don't overwrite anything on the island. I'm trying to be really cautious where I draw these diagrams because other people may wanna see the precise position of some of these swamp lands when they go through and look at some of these pictures. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty cool music. Uh, I'm going to continue on here. Um, I might pause this for a little bit, but I'll play some, finish up this song. Wow. Um, so I don't know if you've seen any of that. I don't know if you've seen any of the dancing in Bali, but it's pretty out there. Um, it's actually one of the only countries, Indonesia is actually a Muslim country, um, but in Bali, it's actually a little bit Hindu, so, and even Buddhist. So they actually combine quite a number of religions there in Bali, so the music is a little bit different. Um, let's finish up that previous song. Um, <laughs> see it's very complicated on the flight traffic path um, but uh, you can kind of simplify the discussion a little bit when you start to understand Kuala Lumpur and Singapore is down here as well as Bangkok and when you look at the prices and I actually want to put it in red here I probably shouldn't put this in red uh, but you got Ho Chi Minh City down here as well so there's actually a tiny little city also shouldn't say tiny it's a mega city uh, but Basically, when you start to understand Southeast Asia, you got to look at the prices of the tickets 
as well as the cost of living in the city. So sometimes, like Singapore, you can get a cheap flight. So oftentimes what happens is you have a cheap flight to a specific city, but then when you land there, uh, the hotel prices could be way ridiculously pricey. So you kind of need to look at other cities nearby. So that's basically what happens in uh, Kuala Lumpur is it's basically a lot cheaper oftentimes uh, to stay in Kuala Lumpur, but it's more expensive to fly there. So it's slightly further to fly there. Um, and the same thing goes for Bangkok. And actually the housing is actually very cheap in Bangkok. So, um, But it's even cheaper in Vietnam. So, uh, But the play, price of the flights go up because there's not as many flights hitting into here. Obviously, Bangkok is one of the busiest cities in all of Southeast Asia. So and it really doesn't even show you the extent of the air traffic. If I could zoom in on these maps, you can kind of start to see, see if I can zoom in that. It's probably gonna want me to reload this image. So this is a live image and we just took it and this is right at around noon time or so their time. So basically what's hard to see here is that how many airplanes are actually in some of these areas. You kind of got to zoom in and you can start to get a picture for how this air traffic works all in Indonesia. But basically it's no joke, Singapore and Kuala Lumpur are definitely a part of that. And you can see that there's some scattered airports all throughout Sumatra and then some other airports. These blue markers are the airports here. And it's actually hard. Um, it can be quite difficult and scary. Uh, you can die landing in some of these airports because there's so many mountains um, and it's just tiny little airports and tiny little aircrafts, and they get very serious storms that come in through here all the time. So you just don't know like what, you know, it can be a cheap flight, but you're not really sure if you're really gonna make it or not. Um, so um, there's been some stories of famous missionaries that have tried to travel, um, and there's like lightning storms, and they've tried to land their aircraft when they really shouldn't be landing the aircraft. Um, just because it's too expensive um, to fly back uh, to the airport, so they'll just force the landing. Um, but anyway, Indonesia has a ton of different islands. Here's Timor and East Timor. Um, and basically, you get all the way out to these islands where some, in some senses it becomes almost completely lawless um, because they're so far from Java. So it might be very safe on some of these islands, and then as you get further out... Um, there's no police or even any form of government or even any way to even land an aircraft there. So you can see some of these islands on some sides of them don't even have airports at all. <clears throat> so it's a hard diagram to do, um, but it's definitely worth it. So you might want to grab your own picture of this and then see what you can find. Um, I'm going to continue on with this song here and see what else we can do. <laughs> Okay, so like pretty much all I can say about the music is wow, um, pretty um, amazingly different style <coughs> of music <laughs> they're coming out of Indonesia. And <coughs> anyway, so you can see there's a mysterious line here that kind of divides uh, essentially Papua New Guinea. I really think this should probably, it's kind of difficult uh, to have a weird country like this, but it's kind of strange. But you also see this with Haiti and Dominican Republic. So there's basically two of these mysterious islands on our planet. Um, Haiti and Dominican Republic is probably one third the size of this whole gigantic island. But something to think about. Why do we have two of these mysterious kind of galaxy shaped islands? But <clears throat> hopefully this diagram will help you understand a little bit about how the air traffic works. Um, next, we're going to kind of get into the population. Um, so I want to diagram that a little bit more carefully, um, but we're gonna have to find some new music. So I'm gonna have to put this on pause um, while we find some new music because it's a little bit Hindu here in uh, Bali. I'm gonna try to play some Hindu music and maybe even get some uh, Muslim music 
also. Um, but <clears throat> actually, this is kind of from India, uh, some of this. So one of these songs, I'm not sure um, on the quality, but this is all like free music that's basically published on YouTube, mostly from 2023. So it's within the last uh, couple of years. So pretty fresh uh, new sounds. Um, and this is from the artist Hanu. Hanu. Um, it's kind of an ambient song called Dreams of the Ganga. song um thankful for some music here as we try to diagram some of this out so you're going to notice again and again i keep drawing these signs kind of coming from bangkok ho chi minh city and really i need to diagram this out from here as well and then the seriousness of all this population coming in through here and here but we're really trying to focus primarily on indonesia down in the south here so <clears throat> as this whole change changes from Java as they're going to move the capital over here to uh, Borneo, um, it's going to basically change the whole dynamics of everything in this whole region. So you can see they've almost completely populated Java. And over the next 100 years, 10 years, who knows what might happen, but that could really change Borneo dramatically moving the capital here. Um, and certainly the farmland. And it would certainly what I hope would happen is that the... Um, yes, they might populate this whole island, but can they actually move people off of these other islands onto this island um, and basically start farming uh, on the land rather than just doing the fishing? So this is such vital fishing land that they almost need to trade. Um, a lot of the fishing is going on in the ocean here, um, essentially emphasized from Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh City, Hanoi, and especially southern China, right? So there's no joke, the size of the cities here, um, this is almost bigger than Shanghai when you combine Shenzhen plus Hong Kong plus Guangzhou uh, plus Macau, and then all the cities up the Pearl River. You basically have a huge megapolis of a population right in this region. So uh, not to mention India, which is a huge factor, and I should even draw that even more seriously. And then Yangon kind of coming in on that picture as well. You can kind of see Kuala Lumpur. Unfortunately, I drew a little bit of a mark over that, so it's a little bit hard to see. So I'm trying to be a little bit careful about drawing these diagrams. Let's continue on with the music here. Um, I think the next one that we're going to look at uh, is going to be the soil maps here. So let me see if I can grab those soil maps. I think I have a couple of them here. Um, yeah, so with the soil maps, um, I'm going to actually try to go through those a little bit quicker. Um, it would be nice to diagram uh, the whole details out for Jakarta. Uh, but as you can see, they're kind of going around the volcano here. So that could be a very disastrous situation at some point in the future. They're actually, you can actually see where the mountains are. They've actually avoided the mountains and the volcanoes. Um, but definitely a very big city over here, just outside of Jakarta. So there's some details um, that definitely need to be studied, and you can kind of see that on the bigger map. There's a little spot there as well as another spot over there. Um, but on the farming map, um, basically what you see is that these blue regions, the floodplains, are actually becoming the most important farmland in the world. They're actually farming everything all the way deep into this region, even though it's a floodplain. <clears throat> they especially do that in China. Um, I didn't really show that diagram here. <clears throat> Um, but it's actually this bright green area and these will probably become some of the best areas to farm. So you can see Sumatra probably is a huge amount of farmland here. Um, and that's pretty sad because they're already starting to populate most of Sumatra. And the scary part is if they do that to Papua New Guinea, the whole island, this is the only refuge 
really, they need to save some island for the wildlife. And I really hope that they probably do that here. But it's just, it's going to take some uh, government and individual people really working hard to try to make sure that this is not populated, um, especially as Indonesia moves their capital over to Borneo. <laughs> specifically because there's already so much population in Java. Um, as we mentioned, uh, there's just huge amounts of population over here already. So what's the point of marking uh, potential farmland areas? Uh, but we want to watch it specifically on the north side of Silawasi and these other areas. Why farm out everything on all these islands? So uh, especially out in here, I think this island especially looks like it's a prime target uh, for farmlands and farmers on islands. So we want to be cautious uh, as we watch that. And the pressure basically is coming all out of this, right? So it's basically coming out of here and it starts in Lombok and then goes out of here. So with a heavy emphasis right kind of the epicenter right here. So I'll just circle that as uh, being uh, Jakarta. So you can kind of see how this all starts and then basically this all comes you know you have this farmland here um and it basically came from china so basically you have huge amounts of pressure coming in from this direction and then you have huge amounts of pressure coming up from china as well right so you have all that coming down to hong kong and then going over to ho chi minh city and then going all the way down the coast here and then basically coming over to here to bangkok and then further down here all the way to Singapore and then jumping basically from Singapore over to here. So that's basically what's been going on. Um, and it's not to say that Asia, China is the only place to blame. It's actually quite a lot even more so to blame with India, right? Um, in fact, these guys are Hindu over here and there's Muslims over here. So basically, it's probably actually a halfway split um, on why this all changed to be so populated. Um, so it's important questions to look at. Um, and I will save some of these images and try to uh, upload them later. Uh, on the geology side, I'm not really going to modify this too much. This is kind of becoming a pretty extensive conversation already. Um, but uh, you can go through and try to diagram some of this out yourself if you'd like, um, and I have the, the links to the diagrams uh, and all that. Um, and then the food thing, I was really surprised how much they're importing. Yellow is food. So this is, there's actually still importing quite a lot of food, even though um, they do have quite a lot of farmland on some of these new areas. Um, so that's something to be concerned about. Um, you actually see this all around the world. Uh, people are importing food essentially from the United States and also from Russia, um, Ukraine specifically. The grain there, I heard something like 30% of the world's wheat supply is coming from Ukraine. Um, so whoever you are looking at this diagram, I mean, there's a lot of work here to be done. So it's no joke. Uh, I mean, we're looking at a lot of information here and it's really hard to understand everything. So I really challenge you to take a look at what's going on um, and try to diagram it out yourself and see where the problems are, what we can do to work together in all these cities around Southeast Asia. Um, we're talking about approximately more than half of the world's population um, in Asia and basically a huge amount of coverage and discussion needs to be taken place. And so we basically have to understand how this is affecting the wildlife. So as we get out into Indonesia, 
um, that story becomes very clear uh, that we need to protect the ocean um, uh, specifically. And Indonesia plays a huge role in that. So with all the tourists going to Bali, um, it's very important. I've seen just mounds of trash um, that they pick up on the beach just for days and days and months. And just, it's crazy. So um, there's really a lot of big discussion there. So I hope you really enjoyed this discussion. I'm going to save these images that we just looked at. Um, if you would like to uh, play some more music, I recommend going to the uh, YouTube channels here. Um, you can grab the audio library uh, from YouTube. And I just searched for Hindu. And you can get some cultural music on here that's pretty great. And I recommend trying to do that if you'd like to do uh, add some more music to your videos or whatever you're trying to do. Um, but again, um, really try your best to make some good friends um, around the world. I'm happy to try to work with you uh, if you are in Asia on a project. Um, so if you have something that you're working on, whether it's a grocery store, uh, maybe a vegetarian food store or wherever you are, um, I'd be glad to try to just help you out. Um, so let me know um, <clears throat> what you're working on. Um, if you're just flying into some place uh, as a vacation, I'd be happy to try to work with you on trying to study like what would make it more uh, beneficial so it's not just a simple vacation. You can try to work on maybe a project or something with me. Um, and there's just so many different things going on. So I really hope you've enjoyed this study. We've done so much information already. So it's kind of mind blowing how much information all this is. Um, to look at uh, and I didn't want to completely bore people out of their minds so um, but it is super helpful and we've already kind of made a huge step of progress towards helping the wildlife and clean up the ocean just by understanding what's going on in Indonesia it's a huge part of the planet's future and this will be around for not only 10 years but the shape of these things and what's been going on um, this is part of the last few thousand years so really we should expect that whatever you study um, in this whole region uh, will be very valuable um, for the next you know few hundred years certainly so thank you so much um, and let me know what all you're trying to work on I'd be glad to try to work with you see you later have a great night